SQL is the most important tool when it comes to data analysis or data science field. Whenever someone talks about data, data management, data analysis or data science, they must know about SQL at first. So in the coming two weeks, we will be learning SQL and we will be doing some projects in SQL as well. So without any further ado, let's begin. First of all, uh, before moving to learning SQL, we must understand what a database is because uh, SQL will be used for interacting with databases and fetching data from the database. So a database in simple words is a structured and organized collection of data that is stored electronically in a computer system. For example, if we have a notebook where we are storing all the contact numbers, for example, there are five pages in the notebook and in every page we store 30 contacts. So if you want to search for a contact, we need to flip pages to find that contact. While if we want to store the same information in computer, for example, in an Excel file or in an SQL database, we can uh, store it there and we can search for that specific record very easily. So a database is actually a collection of tables where each table stores records of a different entity type. For example, if we have uh, an employee management database where there is a table for employee, there is a table for attendance, there is a table for contacts and projects and different things. So the collection of such tables make a database and in this lecture we are going to learn about tables, uh, database and some other terms which are related to SQL. So, a database is designed to efficiently manage, store and retrieve information. Database is actually a collection of tables linked with each other via a common field where each table stores information in a structured way. There is a simple example that you can see on my screen. We have two tables. In the left side we have a table named employee and in the right side we have a table named projects let me give them names so for example if we consider this as a database here we have two tables on the left side we have employees table and on the right side we have projects table so a database is a collection of uh, different tables where each table is linked to another table via a common field and each table stores information about a different entity type for example, if we see employee table, it stores employee ID, name of the employee, email, title, and the salary. So these fields are related to employee, therefore all these fields together make this table and this stores information about employees only. On the right side we have projects table where there is a project ID, project name, location and the supervisor of the project. So these four fields together make the table of projects and it only stores information about projects. So this is the projects table and this is the employees table. Together both of them collectively make this a database. So a database is nothing but collection of different tables where these tables are connected or linked with each other via common field and it stores information in a structured way. So there are uh, different database terms that we are going to learn today. First of all, uh, there is table, then we have row or record, field or column, RDBMS, relational database management system, and finally we have SQL. So let's start from table. Table is collection of rows and columns that contains information about a single entity type. So a table is actually the combination of uh, rows and columns where a specific table stores information about one single entity type. Like the employee table that I showed before here, this is a table where we have five columns. Employee ID, name, email, title and salary. So these are the columns that you can see and here we have rows. In the first row of this table, we have employee 001, John Doe, it's, it has email, his title, and salary. So this is a single row, and then this is 
a single column so this table is actually collection of different rows and different columns where one table stores information about one entity type so this table stores information about employees it cannot store information about transactions information about projects or anything else because in the database terms a specific table stores information about one single entity type let's move on to a row um, as I said before that a table is actually collection of rows and columns so a single row or a single record in a table is called a row for example the data of a single employee like EMP 001 John Doe and salary 10,000 that we can see in this employee table each row has information about single person that is John Doe then we have the second row that's Jane Smith the third row is Michael Johnson and so on so each row represents a single person or a single employee so we can say that a row is actually a record in the table then we have field or column a field contains information from the same domain like name column will contain the names of all the employees salary column will contain the salary of all employees email column will contain emails only so if we come back to this employees table we can see that there are five different columns the first one is employee id which only stores information about the employee ids then we have name column which stores information about the names email title and salary so a column is actually a field that contains information from the single domain for example email will only have emails it cannot store the salary or name or anything else now what is an rdbms rdbms is relational database management system it's a software which is used to create and manage databases we have different types of rdbmss for example we have PostgreSQL, MySQL, SQL Server, DB2, Oracle, SQLite and so on. So there are different RDBMSs used for different purposes. In this tutorial we are going to use PostgreSQL as the RDBMS which is very simple to use and it's free and open source as well. Now let's finally come to SQL. What is SQL or SQL? SQL is short form of structured query language it's actually structured structured query language and it's a database programming language used to interact with databases it can be used to retrieve store update and delete data in a database so we use SQL which is a database programming language we use it to fetch data from the database insert data delete data update data and manage different types of tasks in databases now there are different types of commands in sql we can categorize sql commands into four categories the first one we can call it ddl data definition language dql data query language dml data manipulation language and dcl data control language ddl short form of data definition language is used to create modify and delete tables and databases it includes commands like create drop alter and so on then there is data query language which is used to retrieve data from table or several tables at once it includes select command and we can use different variations of select to fetch data according to our needs then we have DML, data manipulation language. We use these commands to insert, update, or delete data in a table. It includes commands like insert, update, and delete. Then finally we have DCL, data control language, and it is used to grant or revoke access to database users on the database objects like tables, views, etc. It includes commands like grant and revoke. So these are the terms used in database programming. We studied about database, table, row, column, RDBMS, and SQL. Let's move on and talk about tables and primary keys. As you can see, we have two different tables. 
whenever we create a table we must have a field that can uniquely identify each row in the table for example in this employee table uh, we have employee id we have name email title salary we cannot have title as the primary key because we can have two or three persons with the same title for example we can have two data analysts or three or more software engineers so this cannot be a primary key or this cannot be a field that can uniquely identify each record in this table email can be this field because every person has a different email we cannot have two persons with the same email so this is a field that can uniquely identify each record separately the name is also not a field that can uniquely identify each record because you can have two persons with the same name like we have john doe let me give it a yellow color so we can see it clearly we have two persons with the same name so this is not the field that can identify each row uniquely then we have employee id employee id is also a field that uniquely identifies each record in this table so we have employee id and email whenever we have such choices we need to select one of them as the primary key primary key is a concept that we can set a field or a combination of fields as a primary key whenever we set a field as a primary key we cannot leave that field empty and we cannot have duplicate records in that field for example if i set this employee id as the primary key let me give it a color this one now this is the primary key i cannot have the same value twice or thrice in this field for example if i have emp001 here i cannot write it again here or somewhere else in this field or i cannot leave this blank if i delete this database will not allow this we cannot have a blank value in primary key we must provide it a value so a primary key is a field that can uniquely identify each record in a table we cannot leave this field blank and we cannot have duplicate records in that field so this is the primary key of the employee table let's select project id as the primary key of the projects table now you understand what a primary key is now in a database generally whenever we have different tables each table is linked to another table in some way for example if we have employees then we have projects each project in the projects table will have a supervisor for example supervisor emp003 emp011 emp001 this supervisor column values come from the employee id field of the employee table so a supervisor is also an employee of this company but the role of that person is as a supervisor of a project so the values for this supervisor field come from employee id field of the employee table now we need to link these two tables and they are linked by this employee id column in employee table we have employee id in projects table we have supervisor so this linkage is also another concept and it is called foreign key foreign key is a field in a second table which takes values from the primary key of the first table for example if we consider employee as the first table and project as the second table then this supervisor column is considered to be a foreign key because it takes values from this employee id field of the employee table and it connects these two tables together we cannot have a value in the supervisor field here or we cannot have a value in the foreign key that is not present in the primary key for example if i write emp100 here and let me give it a color so you can see it clearly this emp100 is not present in the employee id column of the employee field because employee id starts from emp001 and ends at emp015 so we have 15 employees only 
We cannot have employee 100 because it is not present in the primary key. A database will not allow for this. It will not allow you to insert a value in the foreign key that is not already present in the primary key. So let me undo this. A foreign key will allow you to enter duplicate records because if we think properly, uh, we can have the same supervisor for two or more projects. A supervisor can be a supervisor of two or more projects. That's not a problem. So therefore, a foreign key can have a duplicate values, but the range of the foreign key field must match with the range of the primary key field. I mean that the supervisor fields cannot get values which are not present in the employee ID of the employee table. I hope you have understood the concepts of primary key and foreign key. Now that we understand what a database is, what table is, what primary key and foreign key are, what SQL is and what RDBMS is, let's start downloading and installing PostgreSQL. Okay, first of all, you need to visit this page. I'll put the link in the video description below. Whenever you see this page, it says downloads. You need to click on any operating system that you're using. Currently, I'm using Windows, so I will click Windows. When I click Windows, it will take me to this page. Here it says interactive installer by EDB. And the first statement says that download the installer certified by ADB for all supported PostgreSQL version. Let me click this link that says download the installer. When I click that link, it will take me to this page and it lists all the supported PostgreSQL versions. So we need to install the latest version for our operating system. We have Windows 8664 installed on this PC, so I'll click on this button and whenever I click on this button it will start downloading PostgreSQL on my machine. I have already downloaded this. Let's go and start installing it. You can see it. I have already downloaded PostgreSQL 16.0.1 Windows X64. So let me double click this. Whenever you double click the installation file it will open this page set up PostgreSQL. You need to click on next now here we need to select the directory where we want to install PostgreSQL. It by default selects C program files PostgreSQL 16 directory and I leave it for default. Let's click next. Now it checks all the four options that are available for installation. Here it says PostgreSQL server we need this PG admin 4. It's a GUI interface for connecting to PostgreSQL server and writing your queries. Then we have Stack Builder. We need to uncheck this because we do not need this one. And the final one is Command Line Tools. We need this as well. So we need these three checked and we only need to uncheck the Stack Builder because we do not need that. Let's click Next. Here again, it selects the default path for the data directory. I leave it uh, as a default. Let's click next. Now it says, please provide a password for the database super user Postgres. Remember that this is a very important step where most of the people make mistakes. So you need to be very careful here. It says, please provide a password for the database super user Postgres. It means while installing Postgres, it automatically defines a super user that's called Postgres. So Postgres is the username and we need to define a password while connecting to PostgreSQL server. The username is Postgres already mentioned here. Remember the username is Postgres P O S T G R E S. Now we need to define a password. So the password should be very simple because you need to remember this even if it's a complex password it doesn't matter but I'll suggest giving it a simple password like root or admin so you remember it always. If you forget this password, there is no way for uh, finding this password again. You need to uninstall Postgres and reinstall it so you can have another password for that. So let's define a password here. I'm giving it simple password so I can remember this. Whenever I want to work with Postgres, I will provide this password. Let's click next. Remember this port as well. Whenever uh, 
we use PostgreSQL, uh, it will use this port for connecting to the server. So it's 5432. Click next. It's default locale. Click next. Click next again. Next one more time. And now it's ready to install. Let's wait for a while so it can install all the needed files for us. Okay, the PostgreSQL installation setup is complete. Let's click finish. And now PostgreSQL has been installed on this PC. How to start PostgreSQL? Let's click start menu and write PSQL. Whenever I write PSQL, you can see that there is SQL shell PSQL. This is the command line tool that we checked for installation and the installation wizard. Another way is to search for PG admin. And this is the GUI tool that we will use later on. So first of all, let's start with PSQL. Click on SQL shell PSQL. It will open this black screen and it asks for the server. Server is localhost. Write localhost, press enter. Now it asks for the database name, which is already given Postgres. Let me write Postgres. Click enter and now it's as for the port, it's mentioned already. The port is 5432. Press enter. And now it asks for the username, which is Postgres. I told you at the time of installation that the default username is Postgres. Let's write Postgres. Press enter. And now it asks for that password that we gave at the time of installation. So let me write the password and press enter. When I press enter, it takes me to the Postgres database. You can see that this is Postgres and this is the database that currently we are working on. So currently, if we want to see how many databases are available currently in the default installation, there is a command that's backslash L. And if I press enter, it shows all the databases. Currently, we have three databases. Postgres, which is the default database that we are currently connected to. Then we have template 0 and template 1. So there are three default databases that come in the installation of Postgres. If we want to create another database here, we can create it using the DDL commands, data definition language. So this is one way of connecting to the PostgreSQL server. Let me close this. And now let's connect to pgadmin4. Press the window key on your keyboard. Write pgadmin. And it will bring pgadmin4. Let me click this. So it can open pgadmin4 for us. Remember that this is the graphical user interface for connecting to the PostgreSQL server. Okay, pgadmin is started. This is the first page that we can see. In the left corner, we can see that there are servers. If I click this arrow, it says that there is a server by the name of PostgreSQL 16, which we installed. So it asks for the password for the user Postgres to connect to this server. Remember the password that we gave at the time of installation. So here we write the same password and click OK. When I click OK, it brings me to this page. Here we can see that there are databases. We can see there is a PostgreSQL database. And everything that comes with the default installation is included here. So we have this pgadmin4 and we have the command line tool to work with. Let me close this. First of all, we will work on the command line tools to learn SQL better. And after that, when we have commands over SQL, then we will uh, take another step to use pgadmin4. pgadmin4 is just the graphical user interface of the same PostgreSQL server that we have in the command line tools. So that's enough for today. Um, in the coming video, we are going to start uh, learning SQL. And we will start from the very basic command up to uh, the intermediate commands. Thanks for watching.